Hi, this is Scott with Clasis. What I would like to show you today is how simple it is to create a custom form for your SharePoint list using Clasis app forms. For this demonstration, what I've done is create a custom list on my Office 365 tenant that I've called Contacts and simply added a few columns. The full name column you see here is the default title column that I've renamed to be full name. And then I've added address, city, state, zip phone, and email. Now, creating a custom form for your SharePoint list using Clasis is really quite simple. Select the List tab on the ribbon. On the right-hand side, you will see a Clasis App Forms button. Select that, and finally, click Manage List Forms. This will launch the Clasis App Forms Designer, and for each column that you have defined in your SharePoint list, a corresponding control will be added to the Form Designer for you automatically. So as you can see, there's a text box control for title, which again is my full name column. There's a text box for address, one for city, state, zip, phone, and email. There's a control for adding attachments, just like you can using SharePoint forms. There are save, edit, and close buttons. And there's also a few hidden fields on this form, and I'll talk about some of those in a few moments. Another feature of the App Forms Designer I want to show you, though, here on the left is this section called Data Sources. When you choose to create a custom form for your list using Clasis, a data source back to that same list is automatically pre-configured for you when you launch the designer. So if you click on Edit Data Source, you can then see that the Select, Insert, and Update commands are also pre-configured for you and complete automatically. So as an example, let's assume you choose to edit an existing item in your SharePoint list. When this form loads, the select command will be executed to populate the fields on your form with that item's data. After you've made any modifications you wish, you then click the Save button, and then the Update command is run to update that existing list item. If, however, you had chosen New Item, the form would open up blank, of course. You fill in the data, and again, once you click Save, the Insert command would be run to add that item to the SharePoint list. So now let's take a moment and look at the logic behind the form as to how it determines when to run the insert and when to run the update commands. So I'll close this data source window. You'll notice here at the top that the designer tab is selected. That's the form designer. I'll switch over to the rule tab. And the first thing that you'll see is there's a rule automatically created called insert update. Now on the left hand side down here near the bottom, there's a section called attach triggers. This simply shows you what action must take place for whatever rule you're looking at to be executed. So in this case, we're looking at the insert update rule. The action that must take place in this case is the save button must be clicked. It doesn't matter if you're on new item or if you're editing an existing item. When you click the save button, this same rule will be executed. So how is the determination made as to whether or not to use the insert or the update command? That determination is made right here in this condition. This condition is looking to one of those hidden fields on our form called LBLID. Let's take a look at that. Let's switch back to the designer. Here at the top of the form is one of those hidden fields called Label ID. This field gets populated when the form loads. If you have chosen to edit an existing item in your list, this field will be populated with the SharePoint list ID of that item. If instead you choose new item, then this field remains blank. So now let's flip back over and take a look at that logic again. So when you click the Save button, the first thing that we do is run this condition. Is this field blank or not? If it contains a value, then we know that you are editing an existing item. As such, when you click Save, we will run this Update Command subrule, which will execute that data source I showed you called DS Contacts calling the update command to update that existing record. If, however, this field is blank, we know then that you've clicked on new item. So when you click save, we will drop down and run this subrule called insert command, which as you will see, executes the same data source, but this time it calls the insert command to add that item to the list. All right. So we now have our form laid out the way we want. We know our data sources are correct. How do we get this information back to our SharePoint list? So the first thing that we need to do up here in the left-hand corner is click the Save Form button. 
This will save our design changes back to the designer. Now, once that's done, we now need to push those changes back to our list. And for that, we'll be clicking this Check In Form button right there. So I'll click Check In Form. When this launches, you have an opportunity to enter any comments you'd like about the changes you've made. Once you have those completed, simply click OK. The check-in occurs, and once it's done, you're automatically switched back to your SharePoint list. So let's go ahead and test our form. Let's click New Item. And if you'll give me just a moment here, I'll add some test data. And finally, a test email. Okay, now before I click Save, let's think about the logic. We click New Item. Recall that there is a hidden field up here called Label ID. It's blank. So when I click Save, remember we're going to evaluate that condition. We're going to check that field. If it's blank, we will drop down to the bottom half of that Insert Update rule and run the Insert command to add this item to our list. So let's click Save. And as you can see, that item was indeed added. All right, let's go ahead and edit this same item now. Let's think again about the logic behind the form. The select command was run to populate the fields on this form with that data. This hidden field now contains the SharePoint list ID for this item. So let's make a modification here to the phone number. Now when I click Save, since this hidden field does have a value, we will run the top half of that rule and we'll run the update command to update our existing record. Let's click Save. As you can see, a new item was not added, but our phone number did indeed change. So as you can see, in just a matter of a few minutes, and really nothing more than about three or four clicks, we have a custom form designed for our SharePoint list using Clasis. Those clicks again are Manage List Forms, you click the Save Form, you click Check In Form, and you're done. It is really that simple. I hope that you found this demonstration to be beneficial. We're going to be producing a number of these over coming weeks, so please visit our site often for updates. Our site is www.clasis.com slash pages slash viewdemo.aspx. If there's something that you would like to see in a demo that's not currently there, please let us know. Um, email us at info at and we'll do our best to get something that you need added. It's been a pleasure. Again, I hope you found this beneficial, and thank you for using Clasis app.